Hey, what's up you guys, The Curious Owl here, and today I have my April 2023 wrap up. So April did feel like it went by really quickly. It felt like April 1st was just like a couple of days ago and now we're in the beginning of May, which is absolutely insane. I I don't know what's been going on with time recently. March did feel like it went by a lot slower and April is just gone in the blink of an eye. But despite that, I got through a lot of things this month and I actually completed my entire TBR that I had originally set for the month of April. So I'm super pleased with that. But Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the stats for the month. So in terms of reading stats, I had read a total of 3,554 pages in the month of April. And that is so far the most amount of pages I have read in a given month. So I am steadily making more and more progress in terms of reading more and more each month. And I also had 11 hours exactly of audiobook minutes. I had one audiobook I read this month that was 11 hours solid, was super pleased with it and very happy that I was able to get an audiobook in this month. Out of my books, like I said, I had one audiobook. Six of them were physical books and the other five were ebooks. Eight of the books that I read this month were from my physical library and the other four were borrowed from my library or from my Libby app. In terms of star ratings, I had five five-star reads, six four-star reads, and I did unfortunately have my very first two-star read in the year of 2023. In terms of my Wheel of D20 reads, I did complete my entire list of Wheel of D20 books this month. I also completed my entire Aurelium TBR, and I actually completed a lot of prompts for Realmathon that I kind of like silently participated in in the past month, and I also completed a lot of things for Battle of the Bookish as we did have the Battle of the Bookish Skills Training Camp. I read all but two of the books that I wanted to in that week of the Battle of the Bookish Skills Training Camp, but it went super well. But anyway, let's get into the reads. So the first book I ended up reading this month was Waiting for Spring Volume 1. This was one of my Wheel of D20 reads. I do have my thoughts reserved for that video, so you should go check it out. But I did give this a four to five stars and it was very cute. I really liked the way that the story's kind of developing and I like the idea of how this story's going. So I'm really excited to see kind of how that continues in the future. Then another book that was on my Wheel of D20 20 TBR was Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. This one though I gave a five out of five stars. I hate though that I really loved this. Like this was one of those books where when I talk about it in my Wheel of D20 video it was very much a book I shouldn't really have enjoyed all that much and I just I ate it up. Next, I ended up doing another Wheel of D20 read. This one was Bedazzled by Ryan LaSala. This was a reread for me though, but like I said, I did have this for my Wheel of D20 reads, and this one also did get a five out of five stars. Definitely go check out my thoughts on this, because um, there's some things about this that I think I expanded on more than I may have done the first time I read this book. I read something that was a little bit different than what I had been reading in that month so far. I basically decided to move away from my Wheel of D20 reads for just a hot second to start White Rage by Carol Anderson. This is a book I had been meaning to read for a very long time. As you can see, I've annotated and page flagged a ton of things in this. Basically, this book had me feeling one of two ways, either really sad with these blue flags or really angry with the red ones because this book is very much a book that talks about the racial injustice that there has been on black people over the course of time, starting from about you know, the Civil War and even before that, but more specifically starting around the Civil War time and going forward into more so recent times, especially with the inauguration of former President Donald Trump. And basically this book just outlines a lot of the ways that black people had been subject to white rage and how white rage really had separated people of color for a very long time over the course of history. Going as far as explaining a lot of the things that had happened during the civil rights movement, for instance, that may have never been really talked about before, and also things involving the 80s and the war on drugs, and then also times before that between the Civil War and basically the civil rights movement where there was a lot of prejudice and a lot of 
attempts at slavery in a post-slavery world, essentially. And so this was definitely something I highly recommend for those of you that are interested in learning more about the actual history of Black Americans and their strife and their struggles over the course of time in American society. So then I moved back to my final Wheel of D20 read, which was Books Machina Origins, Volume 3, Issue 3. This was the next installment I needed to read and, again, was my final book for the Wheel of D20. It was a 5 out of 5 stars. Everything in this comic series I absolutely love there's nothing ever wrong with it for me I always enjoy it and this was a very quick read like I got through this thing in like 10 minutes it was super quick next was Venko by Sherry Dem Demoline this was Brandy's book club pick for her membership book club for the month of April and I was really surprised with how much I really liked this this was much more fun than I thought it was going to be this is basically a book that is not only about witches but it is in particular kind of in the same vein of practical magic where it's kind of this idea of trying to break this curse or essentially write things that had been done previously where you have a main character who finds this silver spoon that leads her basically to this group of witches that form a coven and essentially this coven is looking to find all of these spoons and bring them together to essentially bring back their powers that they had lost since the Salem witch trials. And there is a witch hunter that is around that is looking for these witches and looking to take them down. So this is very much a story though that focus is really more so on the individual characters. You do get individual character backgrounds of each person, which I do think for some people would be really really annoying and it doesn't feel like there's much of a plot because of that but the real plot is the fact that these women are coming together for a particular purpose to find these spoons to bring back the magic that's kind of the thing but then in the course of that you learn about each of these individual women and the things that they've gone through and the ways in which that they have found each other and found their own identities within finding these spoons and finding each other. So it's a really sweet, very feminine, empowered story, and I just found it to be so enjoyable from beginning to end. To give this a, a four to five stars, because again, I do feel like the plot was a little iffy, like there wasn't really much of a plot until toward the end of the story that you understood what more so the plot was supposed to be, but was still super enjoyable, definitely recommend, and is also my first 2023 release that I have read this year, so I'm very excited to finally have something on that never-ending release TBR knocked off. Next, I read the read for the Zora Neale Hurston read-along this month that Brie and Brandy are hosting. This month, we were reading Mules and Men, which is, I guess, the third installment, really, of this whole, like, mules aspect that Zora Neale Hurston had written. This was very different than the other books that had been written in this kind of way about mules and, and men and blackness and all these things. This one in particular was Zora actually describing going back to different communities that she had grown up in and learning the stories and folk tales that the people in her communities had passed on over time. I also gave this a four out of five stars. I just feel like that in my experience of reading it, I had the audiobook and the physical book. And the audiobook was so vastly different than the physical book that I really lost track of what was supposed to be like the story. Because like I said, like there were sections of the physical book that were just not involved in the audiobook at all. And I just really felt lost with that. So it's not so much the book itself as it was more so my experience of reading it. I just didn't get the full experience that I think I had wanted out of it. And I will say that trying to read it physically by itself was really difficult for me. And I think that because of that, it made me more interested in the audiobook than anything else so I just didn't really feel like I had a, as great of an experience with this book as I think I probably wanted to. Next book I read was actually a book that has been on my self-destruct TBR for the year 2023 so I have officially started off my self-destruct TBR and I have read Crave by Tracy Wolf. Now again this was a book I was not expecting to really really enjoy at all. I also gave this a four to five stars but Wowie, wow, wow, wow. This was actually really entertaining. I feel like this was very much the kind of that trashy YA vibe that I remember people talking about with this, but I was here for it. I am like in love with this world. I love the idea 
of this kind of story and it is not at all what I really expected it to be. This I had heard a lot of people say was like Twilight so very much and it is very much not. It follows a girl who loses her family in an accident and so she's an orphan but her uncle who runs this really prestigious academy in the middle of Alaska in the middle of nowhere basically takes her in and she becomes a student at this school but very quickly she realizes that she is in danger there are people who are looking for her to pick sides in this kind of like high school drama kind of thing that goes much deeper than that but then on top of it people keep telling her that her life is in danger that something is going to happen where her life is going to be in danger and so she gets involved with this dark mysterious young man who quite honestly like despite some of the things he does in here I did kind of swoon over a little bit my little emo heart was definitely feeling for this kid and I just I was falling in love with him a little bit so there's that but this was a really really fun I really liked a lot of what this series is going for and I think this is so much better than I had even expected it to be so I'm really excited to say I will be continuing at least to the second book in the series and hopefully read the rest of it because this we're going on book six apparently later this year so I think that this would be a really good series to like binge read and I might consider doing that at some point when I have the time. The next book I read was one of my books for the NK Jemison read along for April which I am hosting this year if you guys are not aware I will leave the information down in the description but this month we had two reads one of which was optional and that optional read was the graphic novel of Far Sector. Now this is a Green Lantern based comic series where you are following the character of Sojourner or Joe as she is a Green Lantern for this like set of planets and set of communities who basically find out that there has been a murder and it is the first murder in the last 500 years and so this is a really big deal and you learn very easily that the different communities that are involved in this the different species the different races of alien life that are involved in this story there's a very contentious relationship between all of them and so it becomes very apparent to Joe that she's got to figure something out quick and figure out what's really going on because there is more than meets the eye I love this from beginning to end. I need more of Jo. I want to read more of her story. I would love to see M.K. Jemison continue with this character in the DC and the Green Lantern world. I think this was absolutely amazing and I just I think that this story was so well done and I would just love to see M.K. Jemison work on any other kind of graphic novel or comic series even if it's nothing to do with Jo and Far Sector. I just think that she has an ability to really create very fun comic series and I would love to see more of that in the future. Then the next book I read was our actual novel for the month which was the first book in the Inheritance Trilogy, The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. Now I will say this one got a four to five stars for me. It wasn't what I wanted it to be fully but I did like the fact that this was very much more central in the fantasy genre. Now I do have a video that does go over this book more so and Far Sector that you can go check out where I talk about my experience of reading both of these books but The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms overall was really good. I did like it a lot for what it was and I loved the way that the ending of this was but I am very concerned because the way that this book ended I feel as if is final in some way where I have no idea what to expect with going into book two but I guess we'll have to see. Otherwise, for those of you that are looking to join in on the live show, I will be doing an, a live show for N.K. Jemisin's Far Sector and The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms on Saturday, May 6th. It is this coming Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you would like to join, please feel free to do so. I will be having my friend Bree come join me, hopefully, for this live show to talk about The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms because this is one of her favorite series of N.K. Jemisin. So I found it really appropriate to bring Bree on to talk more about her experience with reading it, especially since this is like like the second or third time she'll be reading this series in general so very excited for that and please feel free to join if you would like to. The next book I read was a book that I had read specifically for a readathon but it was Uzumaki by Jinji Ito. This also was one of the books Brie had said that she really really liked when it came to Jinji Ito. This was really really cool. The thing though about it was that I feel like the story was way too long. I feel like the same thing just kind of happened over and over again. So it just kind of got really repetitive and really annoying by the end of it. 
but this is all based in a world where there are these spirals that just start popping up everywhere and they start turning people into obsessive like creatures when it comes to that and i say creatures because there's some crazy things that go on here this is the epitome i think so far of what i've seen of junji ito's horror work like this is the scariest book of the ones I have read of his so far. Tomie was a little bit tame. Gio was just really disturbing, not so much scary. This was scary. This was terrifying in a lot of ways. Some of the imagery that's in this by itself was just really disturbing and terrifying. Like, I was worried about having nightmares after reading this. But, like I said, the story itself took forever, it felt like, so it wasn't a perfect read, but I did really enjoy it, and so I did give this a 4 out of 5 stars. And then finally, the last book I finished in April was my most disappointing read of the entire month, and so far my most disappointing read of the entire year, and that was for the Octavia E. Butler read-along that Brie is hosting with Maya, and it was this month's read of Pattern Master, the final book in the Patternist series. I have no idea what this book was supposed to be about. I was very lost throughout the entirety of it. This is my least favorite book of the entire series, and this series was a struggle for me, I will say, in some ways, but this was just pure agony, it felt like to me. I could not keep track of anybody. I could not keep track of who was doing what. The most I can tell you is that at some point in this book, you have a character who is trying to escape enslavement, and that does not go over very well for them multiple times. That is all I can say because that's all I really got from this because I could not keep my head straight on this entire book. And it was really short, so you would think that I'd be able to get a good grasp of it with like a 150 page story. Nope. Did not happen. I'm surprised I even finished this. Pushed through, and for that reason, it is the only reason it is getting a two star because if I hadn't completely DNF'd it, obviously it would get no rating, but I typically give books two stars if I get some idea of what the story is about, understand at least the context in the other books of the series, like where it's placed and what's kind of different from the rest of the books, but this was a struggle. This was very, very difficult to get through, and I will probably never read this book ever again because I I just didn't like it. But without further ado, those are all the books I ended up reading in the month of April. Ended on a bit of a sour note, but it is what it is. Not everything can be a winner. Not everything can be a four star. There's going to be some bad apples every now and then. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. If you guys did enjoy it, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you'd like to be and would like to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that button down below and subscribe to become an owl at Narflock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.